Hi there guys, here's your Dawn Marathon and today I'm going to continue my tips and tricks series with part 9, the do nots. Yep, uh, the do nots, not the donuts. There are many don'ts, do's and don'ts for the runners in any situation. So, I have so, 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 so many points when it comes to running things which you are absolutely supposed not to do so I would start slowly but I think I'm gonna have to cover this uh, series in multiple parts because it's so much to talk about things which you are not supposed to do so let's start with training for example right when you're training you can do many 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 mistakes the most common mistake is the simplest one it's overtraining when you're training too much training too much you're stressing your bones too much you're stressing your muscles too much and you're doing way too many not just too much too many kilometers but you're uh, certainly doing too many quality kilometers too many tempo runs too many interval sessions and so on so this means you are not recovering properly so recovery is the key to implementing the training and avoiding the mistakes of not to overtrain by recovering properly so as i said in the earlier series you should at least recover three but it's even advised to have four days between high quality sessions there might be a few other smaller quality sessions as strides or fart leg or easy hill work that you can cover up with around two to three days of recovery sometimes even one day it depends but <clears throat> something like tabata sessions but you should certainly have three to four days of recovery when it comes to high quality sessions that's very important then you have to take care of your nutrition during those high intensity training days not only during the race day preparation and the tapering period but especially throughout that entire training cycle because you do not want to endanger your periodization system by peaking too early or too late simply due to the wrong nutrition so that's also another aspect of making mistakes another thing is do not sleep too little it's very important even though Schwarzenegger <laughs> says the keys to success is sleeping faster meaning sleeping just six hours but it's good you can do a lot of things in your life but still when you're an athlete you'll need those 8 to 11 hours right you heard it right Paula Radcliffe used to sleep up to 11 hours and you see a world record is still standing so don't sleep too little then you have to hydrate yourself very well during training when it's too hot and humid after the training necessarily within right after you come home you should really drink enough water whatever electrolytes you need to cover those things during a race it's also important to drink every three to four kilometers if it's a marathon during a half marathon also during a 10k race not necessarily if it's cold outside or cool if it's hot you should drink at least one or two times during the 10k race and during the 5k race you shouldn't drink at all except when it's really 25 to 30 degrees outside and you got the possibility at all to drink then you should take the chance and drink the other thing is choosing the wrong shoes 
Well, don't just listen to the people who are talking a lot about shoes. Shoes, running shoes are tools, meaning you should always test them yourself and the size, whether they are true to size and stuff like that, that they are talking about. You should always test them yourself. Don't just listen to the people, test them yourself, see the effect. But one thing is true, which is generally said, that you should not switch the brand all of a sudden without uh, expecting uh, that there will be some difficulties. Because there are different drops and different uh, shoe types of shoe uh, shapes and this might affect your hips, your posture, everything. You're, and at the same time, it will affect your spinal cord and your whole entire skeleton. So it will really have a negative impact on your bones over the time. So you should be careful when choosing the shoe and extremely careful when switching from one brand, brand to another. So try to choose a similar type of shoe when really switching that brand. And even when you're within a brand, you should be careful because there might be extremely differences of a drop, as is in the Nike Free, for example, or in a previous uh, Nike Flyknit Racer or the Vaporfly with 11 millimeters. So you got a difference of 11 millimeters. That's a lot. I even noticed the three millimeter difference between the vapor five four percent and the next percent, or the vapor street, which is a big difference. So be careful when choosing your shoes. Do make sure to have um, well enough cushioning for certain surfaces for the asphalt for the roads especially but when it comes to running in the woods you should also be careful not to sh choose sho too soft shoes with a too thin sole or whatever you know there are stones lying around you don't want to bend over and tilt over just like when playing basketball so you can injure yourself seriously so it's also uh, an interesting and important point the shoes the other thing is very simple very very simple don't mess it up when it comes to choosing your equipment you have to study really that's what I did not do earlier before I was 34 33 only later in my mid 30s late 30s I started to study the weather you have to focus on the weather and always do care how many degrees there are and what to dress with. Not to dress too thin, not to dress too thick. And see, my son is learning how to walk, but it takes some time. Well, you should dress always according to the weather conditions. When it's cold outside, you should be very careful not to dress too warm because that have a, might have a very bad toll on your muscles and on your body. A memory I only once had at the Kevlar Marathon 2017 in January. I had ties, long tights, a jacket, a shirt, and a, well, another muscle shirt under that jacket. And it was around 3 degrees Celsius and it was raining and I busted up the second half after going out 124 in the first half, kept that pace up to 30k around 2 hours and then I messed it all up with my slowest official marathon ever in 256.58. Only finishing 11th overall, 30 my category. And that was all due to the wrong choice of the equipment, which was certainly much too warm because there were some other runners who just had a muscle shirt and shorts, and that's it. Well, there are certainly many, many, many other aspects of do nots in running. I will continue with this 
start maybe tomorrow or the day after because it cannot be finished in one single part because there are also other details when it comes to training and to also choosing the races and choosing the the time of the races and all that stuff so i'm gonna come back and stay tuned for some other tips and tricks here peace out you're done man